What's up friends, I'm Jonathan Miller and welcome back to Jonathan Miller Music where we help each other become better artists. This weekend I had the privilege of being able to see Twice live in Tacoma slash Seattle and had a fantastic time in spite of the night's shortcomings. So today I wanted to share my thoughts on the show and my whole experience as it was my very first time seeing Twice live. It was also Twice's first time visiting my home in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> So it was special for all of us. If you're a once concert enthusiast, aspiring artist, or K-pop fan wanting to know what it's like before your very first K-pop concert, this video is for you. I'm gonna talk about merch, Ticketmaster, the venue, my seats, twice of course, and the show itself. So give this video a like, subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any more K-pop content, consider becoming a channel member for even more goodies, and here is my review of Twice's fifth world tour, ready to be live at the Tacoma Dome. All concerts begin with getting tickets, so let's start with Ticketmaster. Back in November, I braved the great war that was Taylor Swift's Eras Tour Ticketmaster fiasco, and that was total chaos. Look forward to that review in July when I finally get to see her live. But that experience made me very nervous for this one. Like I said, I had never seen Twice before, so I really wanted good seats. Well, by some miracle, I happened to be seventh in the queue once the tickets opened, and that totally caught me off guard. Prepped for another fight, I knew I had to move fast, so I got in and got to work. Prices actually weren't that bad, but at the time, I definitely couldn't afford floor tickets. So based on all the site maps that I'd seen, I thought the best next place was looking straight onward in the center. Nothing looked obstructed, and there was no indication that there would be any obstruction. So I picked an aisle seat and began checkout as fast as possible. Only to realize later that I had bought two tickets because I forgot to uncheck the seat next to mine. So long story short, June 16th happens to be my older brother's birthday. So guess who got to go with me? The entire process was done in under five minutes. Cause like I said, I expected to get booted or sent back in line. None of that really happened. And I knew demand for the show was gonna be high. Being like seventh or eighth in line, somehow. I had the pick of the crop, but I also had to remember my bank account and would have been financially responsible and come in very under budget had I not bought two tickets. But what's done is done. Happy birthday, Wild16. Note to self, remember to uncheck things as you look. On a more serious note, and I will probably echo this again in my Eras Tour review next month, but even though I acknowledge that my ticketing experience was relatively okay, and the privilege that that gave me, as a whole, I still think buying concert tickets should not be this panic inducing. I do not believe in dynamic pricing, and I don't know if it was turned on for this event. It didn't seem like it was. Full transparency, my total cost was $370, including insurance insurance, fees, and both tickets. Not bad given what I paid for VIP for the Eras tour, but still expensive because I also had to book a hotel, gas, food, etc. I hope to see Ticketmaster and Live Nation continue to be held accountable as I know many Twice fans couldn't get tickets and their frustrations are very valid. Overall though, my personal experience with Ticketmaster for this specific event was not as terrible as it could have been. Again, remember that this video is just my experience. Yours may be different and that's perfectly okay. Anyway, moving on. My brother and I went to the merchandise pre-sale the day before the concert. I wasn't sure how crowded it would be, but my brother really wanted a light stick, so we tried to get there as early as possible. Only to arrive and see that there were only like 50 to 75 people in line max, and the entire experience was done in under 30 minutes. Which, apparently, some of you saw me in that line and didn't say hi. To which I want to say, that is perfectly okay. If you're shy, that's fine. Same. If you do see me at these events, you can say hi though. I don't bite much. Also, I did finally get to meet some of you though at the concert and take some photos together. But I do want to reiterate something. If we take a photo together and you do not want it posted, please tell me because I'm going to respect that. It's completely okay to make a memory and not share it. Safety first, but just FYI, I did love meeting some of you guys. Thank you for coming and saying hi. Anyway, they didn't actually tell us till we got to the registers, but the light sticks and the wristbands were not being sold at the pre-sale. There was no indication on the signs that they wouldn't be, so that was a bit frustrating. Luckily though, the staff was really nice, but everything else besides the trading cards were available. The cards unfortunately had been sold out. So it wasn't too bad, just a bit unfortunate. And because of what would happen on show day, we ended up not getting the candy bong at all. But what I did get was the heart hoodie, the tour hoodie, the heart t-shirt, 
the bucket hat, and the tote bag. My brother also got the tour tee and the baseball cap. Don't look at me like that. It was twice. It was our first time. It was my brother's birthday. And so my bank account can just keep its mouth shut. The merch is pretty high quality. I was really happy about that. The sweatshirts are super soft. I personally liked the designs. I think a lot of artist merch lately could use a little bit of an improvement because I've seen some really cool fan designs. Honestly, some of these people should just start hiring you guys. But still, I loved everything I got. The t-shirt was not as soft as I was hoping for and that I personally like, but once I washed it, it was much better. The tote bag is a lot heavier duty than I expected, so that was really good, and I will definitely be wearing this bucket hat everywhere now. So overall, my merch experience was a 7 out of 9. Wow, 7 out of 9? That's a weird number. It's almost like it's going to be important in just a bit. But first, a shout out to this video sponsor, DistroKid. DistroKid is one of the leading and best music distribution platforms on the market, helping independent artists like you and me get our music up on places like TikTok, Spotify, Apple Music, and more. For one small yearly price, you can distribute as much music as you can create and gain access to a whole lot of additional features and tools to help you manage, grow, and promote your music career too. One such fantastic feature that is so incredibly useful is called Hyperfollow. Hyperfollow is a really cool mobile optimized landing page that keeps all of the links to your music in one place. For example, you can add all the places your song is available so people can go directly to their preferred streaming platform to grab your song. You can add a small bio, your social media links to get new followers. If you've got an official music video or lyric video, you can embed that. Another great thing is that it collects email addresses so you can grow your email list too. Hyperfollow is so easy to use and super helpful. So use my special VIP link to save yourself 7% on your first year's membership with DistroKid. Link is in the description. While it may have been my first time to the Tacoma Dome specifically, I'm a Pacific Northwest native, which means I'm pretty certain that Tacoma is not Seattle. That's about 30 minutes away. But we're talking about twice, so I'm gonna allow it. My experience at the Tacoma Dome was honestly a hot mess and it had nothing to do with the members of Twice or the fun concert goers. We showed up at about 4.30 p.m. for general admission, which was great because at that time there was still plenty of parking and the lines weren't terribly long, so it was all right. VIP entrance was clearly marked, but general admission, however, was not. The merch stand outside had moved to the opposite side of the stadium from where it was the day before, so we thought we would just try for the light stick inside since our place in line wasn't that bad. No staff member confirmed that we were even in the right line, so there was a lot of confusion as more and more people arrived. Everyone's outfits were fantastic, I will say. My favorite thing about K-pop concerts, besides the act I'm seeing, is that they are totally come as you are. I saw people of every walk of life, size, shape, and color, and that is just always a fun energy to be in. People filming TikToks, meeting friends, doing dance challenges, and people in line cheering each other on rather than tearing each other down or making fun of anybody. It's fantastic, so if you are thinking of going to a K-pop concert, wear your heart on your sleeve, dress up, and have fun. But back to the Tacoma Dome being a hot mess. In total Pacific Northwest style, it rained. And not pouring down rain. No, the annoying drizzle, haze type of rain that gets you super wet, it comes and goes, and ruins your makeup if you're wearing any, regardless. Normally, that would be whatever, as the doors were supposed to open at 5.30, and they did. And... Then they didn't. Another hour goes by and no one really knows why the line's not moving. The show starts at 7.30 and K-pop concerts start when they start and they end when they end. And there were still thousands of people outside. There was practically no service at the event too, which means that while JYP announced at 6 p.m. that Dahyun and Jonghyun had unfortunately tested positive for COVID-19 and would not be in attendance to tonight's concert, no one really found out about it until 6.45 when word started to spread through the lines as we all played telephone. At roughly 7 p.m., a staff member also informed the lines that only the Candy Bong Infinity and wristband would be allowed into the venue, meaning that if you brought another group's light stick or had an older version of the candy bong, it would not be allowed into the venue. This caused many people to lose their places in line to go try and return their light sticks to their cars or figure out what to do with them. And I get it, you're going to a Twice concert, you should bring the light stick for Twice, but like 30 minutes before the show starts to clarify this, when at this point there was no mention of a show delay, I thought that was a pretty crappy thing to do, and I felt really bad for the people who 
who had to lose their place in line and run to their cars or figure out what to do after already waiting multiple hours in the rain with zero aforementioned clarity about that. I understand that this is starting to be more common for other group concerts to mandate, and I don't know if this was a specific JYP mandate or a Tacoma Dome mandate because of their weapon policy and not wanting to be held liable for anything but the most recent candy bong, but either way, I didn't really like that. So moral of the story, if you go to a K-pop concert with another group's light stick, just be aware that you might be turned away. Anyway, the doors finally open back up somewhere between 7 and 7.15, and another staff person comes by and informs everyone that the lines on the east side of the stadium were also general admission, and moving fast, so then everyone dispersed trying to get over to that side to get in, to get in as fast as they possibly could. We finally get in about 7.20 p.m., only to find out that our seats were completely obstructed by cameras, and a large portion of the floor would not be occupied. My personal view was blocked by not only the cameras, but the cameramen and the poles holding up the platform. So I could really only see the girls through the screens. Again, I want to reiterate that we were given no indication that our seats would be obstructed. I was under the impression that I had gotten great seats, but a lot of people in our section clearly did not know either and were upset because we really couldn't see anything. And so many people went to guest services to try and get different seats. My brother and I ultimately decided that trying to get through another line was wasn't worth it, especially because the show was supposed to start at any second. So we just decided to smile, have a positive attitude, laugh at the unfortunate moment, and just stay where we were. Then it was announced that the show was delayed about 45 minutes due to heavy traffic around the stadium, and thousands of people still trying to get into the stadium, get food, use the restroom, etc. Which by the way, the restroom stalls, at least in the men's, had no locks. Which I'm going to be real with you. I have actually been attacked in a public restroom before, so that was a big safety concern for me that I didn't enjoy. Luckily though, I was at a K-pop concert and everyone was super respectful, waited in line, gave space, and once again, K-pop audiences are 10 out of 10. Then finally, at about 8.15 p.m., it was showtime. There may have been some bumps in the road and my personal view was so obstructed that I was straining my eyes trying to see the queens in person, but let me tell you, Twice put on such a fantastic concert that I didn't even care about the headache that happened prior. When they finally appeared on stage, the energy was electric. I have never heard such cheering and excitement that it gives me chills just even thinking about it again. I could tell that the girls were initially nervous about showing up as seven when the audience obviously expected nine, but we cheered so loudly to let them know that we were seen twice and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Health and safety comes first always. Like I said, this was my first time seeing Twice, so did I want to see all nine members? Yes. Was I sad that Dahyun and Jonghyun were not there? Yes, for about 0.6 seconds, because I knew the girls would deliver regardless. If you are so sick that you have to take tons of medication, get hooked up to an IV or whatever, just to get on stage, I don't want to see you on stage. Even if I had to travel hours away, pay for a hotel, get time off work, health, always comes first for me. This is just my opinion, but my entertainment does not outweigh your health. If I had gone all that way and all of the members ended up sick, but they still wanted to put it on a show, leave them in their hotel with a camera, give them all a Nintendo Switch, and I will watch a two hour live stream on the Jumbotron of them playing Animal Crossing. Jokes aside, health and safety always comes first. Rest up, take care of yourself, and we'll see you next time. For me personally, it's okay. Anyway, that show was a banger. Jihyo went out of her way, not only as the leader, but clearly as someone who's about to take a solo role to make every person in that audience feel special and not exactly intended. The microphones were on, as evidenced by Jihyo's several different ad libs, multiple acapella moments. <laughs> Breaths caught on the mic, Sana's cute little whoop when she fell during Dance the Night Away, and more. Having a backing track does not equate lip syncing. I assure you, these girls were not lip syncing, they are just 
that good. Jihyo talked about her solo album and how Nayeon and Chaeyoung visited her on set since she's already filmed the music video for Killing Me Good. Then they did a couple dance moves from the track as a special spoiler. And Jihyo also sang Nightmare, which is a song on her upcoming solo album. Honestly, her stage presence was especially magnetic that night. And someday, we are gonna get a solo Jihyo concert and she will absolutely crush it. I was very impressed with her in particular. However, all of the girls slayed every second. Sharon Sharon during Seven Rings and absolutely crushed her cover. Tui performed a beautiful Charlie Puth cover. Cheon killed her solo guitar performance. Momo really said muscles and upper body strength with her dance solo. I tell you, it's one thing to see her dance on a screen and another to see her move live. There was not a beat that woman missed. Sana was of course the class clown and I loved every second of it. Toward the end, Misamo sang a small aqua a sample of Marshmallow, which had dropped earlier that day, so we sorta got the first live performance of it and they rocked it. Nayeon clearly had the time of her life when the whole audience screamed when she started singing pop. To which I would just like to reiterate, listen girl, it is gray and rainy and cloudy like 12 months out of the year here. You gave us like the song of the summer in 2022. So of course we are going to scream especially loud for that one. She also got startled when we all started stomping and it was just a lot of fun. Group performances were excellent. They gave us three roulette songs. Side note, I loved how whenever Dahyun and Jungyun were shown on transitional videos, we all cheered so loudly for them. They were definitely there in spirit. But we got Donut, Like Ooh Ah, and Basics as a special bonus song. As the girls could tell, we really wanted it, and Young was clearly touched that people really liked the song she wrote. Part coverage was so smooth. I only noticed a few holes in the choreography, which is to be expected when you're down two members. Masterclass professionals, I loved the whole thing. For what could have been a disastrous night, Twice proved that they are entertainers through and through. 99.9% .9 of my issues had to do with the venue itself. Communication and clarity would have been nice, especially since our seats were unexpectedly obstructed, and because of the chaos, I wasn't able to get my brother a light stick for his birthday. I'm sure other people probably had similar experiences. If you are thinking of seeing Twice in the future though, please do, because even being down two members, they made up for it tenfold. Great music, stellar performances. Hopefully JYP in the future will send them to Lumen Field, which is actually in Seattle, because I have no doubt that Twice could easily sell it out. If you were there in Tacoma or you've seen Twice live before, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe so you don't miss any more concert reviews. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.